Hello and welcome to the part three of the predictive analytics series on the 2014 Indian elections presented by Fuzzy Logics. I'm Joydeep Das, Chief Strategy Officer of Fuzzy Logics, and with me I have Partha Sen, CEO of uh, Fuzzy Logics. So, as you may have seen in the part one and part two, we have uh, given an overview of using a scientific method to predicting the Indian elections. In part two, we went uh, deeper into state by state uh, analysis of what can be expected, expected from these scientific methods. What we're going to do today is go further into additional states, especially the states that have some um, uh, idiosyncrasies uh, to be taken into account uh, in these uh, models that we are using, and also finally go into the final All India predictions. And Partha is going to give you a quick recap of uh, what we have done in part one and part two. We have posted them on YouTube and uh, the blogs associated with them in fuzzyl.com slash analytic insights and you can find that uh, in our uh, website. So with that, let me hand it over to Partha. Partha. Thank you, Jadeep, uh, and Namaskar uh, to our audience. Um, before I start part three today, I'd like to actually uh, uh, make some corrections, actually two corrections pertaining to part two. So in part two, I stated that uh, Madhavra Sindhya is contesting from Gwalior Actually, it is not Gwalior, it is Guna in uh, Madhya Pradesh. And um, uh, secondly, um, I was not sure about whether Kamal Nath's constituency, Chindawara, is in uh, Chhattisgarh or Madhya Pradesh. It is in Madhya Pradesh. So um, having said that, um, let's uh, move on to uh, uh, our methodology. Just a brief recap, Jaydeep, of our uh, methodology. So uh, we are using a raking or um, iterative proportional uh, factoring. Um, for our methodology. We are actually using the vote share um, uh, projected by uh, different opinion polls because we are not conducting any opinion polls. Um, the audience have to, has to understand that we have a methodology, but we are actually uh, using the opinion polls from the various organizations in India and we have a database uh, where as new opinion polls become available, we uh, update that database and that's the uh, one that we are using. And we are not using any opinion polls at the moment um, that are prior to March. Um, also, we have accounted for the pre-poll alliances in various states. And uh, when we make a forecast, uh, we have actually relied on sensitivity analysis to uh, see how stable our forecast is. Uh, and again, um, as uh, I have said in the past, is that uh, we want to come up with a methodology that is transparent uh, to our uh, viewers. So Partha, just for the uh, for recap uh, for our viewers here, uh, what Partha is saying is that we are using the opinion polls uh, just as an input. Uh, everything that we are showing you here and we have shown in part one and part two is a methodology that we are using with in, uh, opinion polls just as an input. Opinion polls themselves are not actually being used for any kind of predictions. They're just being used as inputs. That's correct. Um, so uh, with that said, uh, let's uh, do a recap of the 12 states uh, that we covered yesterday. And um, uh, here's the recap. So um, uh, we uh, went through Assam, Chhattisgarh, Gujarat, Jharkhand, Karnataka, Kerala, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Odisha, uh, Punjab, Rajasthan, and West Bengal. And um, uh, these 12 states actually cover 291 seats. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we have done here is that uh, we have actually um, uh, taken or summarized uh, the projected wins for both the BJP-led National Democratic Alliance and the Congress-led UPA. And um, uh, you know we have uh, these summaries available. Now, uh, as I said, that we have actually performed sensitivity analysis on the forecast, and it is not one number. We have two scenarios. Uh, so scenario one, which is on the left side of the uh, screen here, that is uh, uh, more optimistic towards uh, the BJP. Um, and uh, the, uh, the, here we have uh, scenario two, which is less optimistic towards the BJP. So it's like uh, uh, you know taking ranges. So we want to forecast, but we don't want to forecast a number. Uh, we want to forecast within a range, uh, within a uh, you know, range where we feel comfortable about. Um, so, Partha, why, why would that uh, range be uh, important here? Uh, what, what would be the basis for that range? Uh, uh, well, uh, you know, uh, we showed yesterday that a 1% vote share or a 2% vote share in certain states uh, does cause a significant amount of swing. We uh, showed that, I showed that in uh, um, Karnataka, 
uh, in part two that uh, it is uh, uh, you know resulting in a swing of about seven eight seats between uh, um, uh, NDA and uh, UPA, the BJP and the Congress. Um, and um, you know similarly, I showed that uh, you know one percent or two percent uh, vote share uh, difference in uh, Rajasthan could actually uh, result in uh, three or four more seats for the BJP. Uh, versus the Congress. So you have to account for those things. You cannot uh, you know, hang your hat on one number uh, because that uh, is uh, not probably going to materialize. And also that is the characteristics of this raking method where you're able to take uh, various scenarios into account yes. as you do your projections. Yes, that is correct. So uh, where we are at is that uh, we are uh, uh, seeing that uh, for those 291 seats, uh, the BJP-led NDA is uh, expected to get 169, uh, and the Congress-led UPA is expected to get 59 for this particular scenario, the scenario one. Um, and in scenario two, uh, BJP-led uh, NDA is expected to get 144, and Congress-led UPA is expected to get 81 seats, right? So um, uh, one thing to consider here is that what is more optimistic to BJP is actually less optimistic to Congress, so 59 seats here, and here it is more optimistic towards the Congress and less optimistic towards the BJP. So uh, it's like, you know, uh, one goes one way, then the other goes another way uh, like that, so vice versa. And, and the purpose of illustrating with uh, NDA and UPA here is because they are the leading um, uh, leading parties in terms of the number of seats and votes here. Yeah, I mean, I think that if you consider the history, uh, the political history of India for the last uh, several years, I think the last, you know, since uh, 96 um, uh, or, you know, 96, 97 onwards, I would say that these are the two major or the dominant alliances. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, you know, is it possible that a, a, a conglomeration of uh, other parties could form the government? That is possible. but. Uh, based on the poll numbers that we are seeing, uh, that uh, and it could happen, but uh, it, it's unlikely. It has a lower probability. I would it's say. also that's what the our model is predicting here, and in terms of the uh, sheer uh, number of seats, these are the dominant two uh, uh, alliances. Right. So, uh, without uh, uh, further ado, uh, let's uh, move on to part three. So, um, uh, we have the forecast for the twelve states. Uh, today, we are going to forecast for some of the more interesting states, uh, mm -hmm. Delhi, um, where um, the Aam Aadmi Party actually won the assembly elections, um, and, uh, you know, close enough to Delhi, Haryana, where the Aam Aadmi Party happens to have some influence. Uh, we are going to uh, make the forecast for Bihar, where there is some shift in, uh, expected shift in uh, voting patterns after... Um, uh, Nitish Kumar broke off from his uh, 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 broke off from the alliance with the NDA. Uh, we are going to cover Tamil Nadu, uh, where um, the ADMK, the DMK, the Congress are actually uh, contesting the election separately, not in an alliance. And it's the BJP which has formed an alliance with uh, smaller parties. Uh, we are going to cover Uttar Pradesh, the uh, the state of Uttar Pradesh, which has. 80 seats, and I know that uh, our viewers are actually interested to see what we have to say. Uh, and obviously, we will uh, also project for Andhra Pradesh. Uh, and then um, at the end, uh, we ha we'll have an All India forecast. So the states that you have already covered in part two, uh, will it be possible to summarize that? Well, I, I did summarize that. I, I think the summary is uh, already here, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, 100 and, uh, uh, you know, uh, the BJP-led uh, um, uh, combine is expected to be in between 144 and 169 seats. Um, out of the 291 seats that we covered yesterday. And uh, the Congress-led uh, UPA combined is expected to win between 59 and 81 seats based on our forecasts. And besides these uh, new states that you're going to highlight and the ones that you have already covered, um, uh, if viewers have questions about the smaller states with fewer seats, mm -hmm. uh, what do you have to say to? Well, I, uh, we'll get into that. Okay. I, I think that uh, we uh, I, we definitely want to. I, I definitely want to talk about that, and that is uh, uh, that is uh, important mm -hmm. um, because I think that the smaller states, uh, Goa, Tripura, uh, Nagaland, Sikkim, um, Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, mm -hmm. um, they have um, I think uh, about uh, thirty four seats, thirty four or thirty six seats, uh, and I think they do have a role to play. Mm -hmm. uh, they do have a role to play, and we'll talk about that. Okay. So, um, uh, without uh, further ado, let's uh, go on to the forecast for Delhi. Mm -hmm. 
So yesterday, uh, West Bengal was our last state uh, that we forecast. So uh, let's uh, uh, select Delhi. Now, in Delhi, uh, let's start with what the opinion polls are saying. So we have three opinion polls. Uh, we have uh, CNN and IBN projecting 29% for AAP, the Ahmadmi Party, 40% uh, for BJP, and 22% for the Congress. Uh, the India Today poll, you know, roughly same uh, um, percentage of votes for each of the parties. Uh, the NDTV poll is actually projecting a, s a smaller percentage for the Congress. Uh, so you see, um, I mean, all the three polls are fairly consistent, uh, um, giving about 40% votes to the BJP and uh, uh, about 28-29% uh, 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 to the Aam Aadmi Party. Now, based on these poll numbers, we are actually expecting a clean sweep of all the seven seats in Delhi by the BJP. And again, the poll numbers that we are considering is an average of these three. Yeah, these are the average of these three. So um, uh, if uh, these poll numbers were to come true, mm -hmm. if these poll numbers were to come true, then we are, ex we are expecting that BJP will win all the seven seats in New Delhi. Okay, now let's, let's try to do something. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, this uh, may be actually contradictory to what uh, people are actually expecting because the Aam Aadmi Party, um, um, uh, you know, um, got about 30% uh, of the votes in the assembly elections and they won a good chunk of seats. They also won the government in Delhi. So, um, so intuitively, this looks like uh, quite a bold projection by this model. So uh, it'll be interesting to see the what if. Well, I think that I, I, I don't like to say bold or timid projection. I think I'll just go by what the numbers are telling me. Okay, great. Um, I'm not putting any subjective uh, assessment into this. Mm -hmm. And uh, in all of our forecasts, we have not put any subjective assessment at all into play. It's whatever the model tells yeah, what us. Yeah, we are going by whatever the numbers are telling me. Yeah. I would rather side by the numbers and be wrong and or uh, than be right and be subjective. Uh, right. Because, you know, you can only be right uh, having subjective assessment a few times. You cannot be, on an average, you will do better if you were actually to be uh, relying on the numbers Pure for numbers. the forecasts. Yeah. So um, what we are going to do now is let's uh, increase the vote share of Aam Aadmi Party by, let's say, uh, 5%. Um, so we go to 33% and uh, uh, let us uh, reduce the vote share of uh, uh, the BJP by five uh, percent, so uh, thirty-six percent uh, for the BJP. Let's leave Congress and the others uh, as is. So, in that case, the Aam Aadmi Party wins three seats and the BJP wins four seats. Okay. Now, based on these numbers, is that likely? I don't know. But uh, if the voting pattern is different than what the opinion polls are saying, this is a possibility. Yeah. Okay. Now, let's uh, uh, take. Um, the individual forecasts here. Let's take the CNN IBN forecast, uh, which is 29% uh, for the Aam Aadmi Party, 40% for the BJP, and 22% uh, for the Congress. Uh, and let's see what happens. Um, so it's a clean sweep uh, by the BJP of uh, in, in uh, New Delhi uh, or in Delhi. Um, uh, so let's take 27% uh, um, uh, for AAP, 42% uh, for BJP, and 14% for the Congress, um, as um, you know, as per the data from NDTV, and let's see what happens here. So it's still a clean sweep of uh, uh, all the seats. Um, so let's do one more thing, one last thing, and I'm trying to spend the time here to explain uh, the uh, the sensitivity of this forecast. So let's say um, I give 29% uh, to um, Aam Aadmi Party, uh, the same percentage of votes that they had in the assembly elections. And um, let's say uh, the 2% comes out of BJP. Um, and uh, let's see what happens. So BJP still gets seven seats. Mm -hmm. so, so this is something that, is, um, that I wanted to show. Now, uh, I know that you have questions. So um, why don't we uh, delve into those? Yeah, so I think the main thing here is um, uh, around these models, uh, when you have significant changes, uh, with uh, any of these changes to the uh, vote share that you just uh, expressed. Um, what, what are the characteristics that people should be paying attention, especially in the context of Delhi? Uh, that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with... Well, again, I think that we have to go by the numbers, mm -hmm. right? And I, 
I, I, I yeah, you know, this is like uh, these are like elections polls. So whoever gets the maximum number of votes wins, you know, mm -hmm. first past the post system, and mm -hmm. you have to go by the numbers. So I'm actually going to show you something. Um, uh, this uh, this could actually provide uh, more mm -hmm. information. So. Mm -hmm. What we have done is we have actually uh, taken the results of the assembly elections mm -hmm. um, and um, combined uh, the assembly segments um, for each uh, Lok Sabha constituency in Delhi and uh, thus uh, aggregated the votes for the Aam Admi Party, uh, the BJP, and the Congress mm -hmm. uh, in each Lok Sabha constituency. Uh, so let's uh, look at these results. So you see, uh, in Chandni Chowk, uh, the Aam Admi Party would have won based mm -hmm. on those assembly elections. Assembly now elections. I know that uh, the the assembly elections are quite different than the Lok Sabha elections, since the national election versus a you know state election. So the issues are different. Yes. But just in case that if that trend were to continue, even if that trend were to continue, um, the Aam Admi Party would have won Chandni Chowk uh, by a slender margin. The BJP would have won East Delhi by, you know, um, I would say reasonably good margin. Good, good margin. Uh, the Aam Admi Party would have won in New Delhi by a pretty good margin. The BJP would win in uh, Northeast Delhi by a reasonably good margin. Um, and in Northwest Delhi, did, uh, BJP will actually win by a big margin. Very big margin. Um, and in South Delhi, BJP will win by a respectable margin. Uh, and in West Delhi, it is even Stephen, uh, you know, Very close could win. but, you know, if we were to project based on uh, the assembly elections, then uh, the Aam Admi Party would be winning. Now, the theme here is that if you were to aggregate the results from the assembly elections in Delhi, um, the Aam Admi Party would be winning two seats by a slender margin, Chandni Chowk and West Delhi. Mm -hmm. It will be winning New Delhi, but you have to consider that out of the 42,000 votes that it would be winning in New Delhi, 25,000 was the margin between Arvind Kejriwal and Sheila Dixit. Mm -hmm. So in all of the other assembly segments, it's not they were only able to get a 17,000 17, vote. Now, mm -hmm. so, you know, that can explain that if the vote share uh, in the in the assembly polls, the BJP, I think, got about 33 percent, mm -hmm. um, and uh, the Aam Admi Party was 29 percent. So uh, the BJP, uh, based on these opinion polls, is actually uh, scoring higher. So that differential probably is explaining to you that, you know, why we are seeing a clean sweep in Delhi. Yeah. And for our viewers, actually, um, this is the reason uh, we have said right from uh, part one that our method here is very transparent. And it's another uh, reason we pointed out in part two that these states, uh, Delhi, Haryana, and the others that Partha uh, highlighted earlier, we are covering in this special segment in part three because of these special scenarios that have to be taken into account in our model and be very transparent about every aspect of these scenarios for these states. That's correct. Uh, now, uh, one thing I uh, forgot actually, um, here uh, we are showing that uh, uh, the Delhi, the seven seats, this 2009, uh, but 2009 up was not really in existence. Um, uh, we have um, actually uh, calculated all of these based on the 2013 assembly elections. So in the context of Delhi, uh, this is not really 2009. Uh, this is uh, projected uh, based on uh, the 2013 assembly elections. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, pick up our next state, uh, which is uh, Haryana, um, the neighborhood of Delhi and uh, see what is uh, going on here. So in Haryana, um, unfortunately, we have only one opinion poll from CNN and IBN. Um, and um, that opinion poll is actually giving a slight margin to the National Democratic Alliance. 36% um, uh, for the NDA and 30% uh, uh, for uh, the Congress. So based on uh, those projections, um, we are actually uh, forecasting that uh, seven seats for the NDA and two seats for uh, the Congress. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, in Haryana, the BJP is in alliance with the Haryana Janhit Party um, and uh, the uh, the Lokdal Indian, uh, uh, the Indian National Lokdal is actually uh, contesting on its own. Uh, the BJP used to have an alliance in the past 
uh, with the INLD, but no more. Uh, they are actually in alliance with the Haryana Vikas Party. Uh, now, if and in you fact, were these to... are the reasons why uh, it's it's uh, quite uh, complex to predict an all India uh, uh, base, uh, you know, election results because of these uh, variances that we highlighted in part one. And this is an example of how this changes in alliances state by state and it's not universal right in each state it is different yeah it's a it's a huge factor to take into account yeah and i think that uh, the reason we are actually able to do this is that we have an extensive database where we have uh, uh, stored all we keep track of all these uh, alliances results um uh, you know pre-poll alliances post-poll alliances uh, the vote shares, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, opinion polls, and we update it when new information is available. Yeah, I think that's um, the technology uh, advantage that uh, we are able to bring right. into play here. So let's uh, take 33%. Uh, this is something I have looked at, and 33%, um, uh, again, even Stephen, for both mm -hmm. uh, the UPA as well as the NDA. And uh, let's see, well, NDA still holds on to seven seats. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, you know, the forecast here looks uh, pretty robust. Um, unless uh, uh, the opinion poll numbers um, and the actual vote shares are, you know, quite divergent from one another. That's true. Um, so the next state that we want to go is uh, Bihar. And um, uh, we have, uh, there are 40 seats in the Lok Sabha from Bihar, um, a reasonably large state, uh, actually a pretty large state. Um, the, I think the only two states that have more seats uh, than Bihar are West Bengal, 42. Uh, Andhra Pradesh used to have 42, but now um, it's going to be bifurcated into Simandra and Telangana, mm -hmm. and uh, 48 seats um, from Maharashtra. Um, and of course, Uttar Pradesh, which has 80 seats. So three, three states really, and two states other than Uttar Pradesh, which have more seats than Bihar. So in Bihar, uh, we have... Uh, uh, three opinion polls uh, from CNN, IBN, uh, India Today, and NDTV. And um, um, as far as uh, the you know the poll numbers are concerned, I think that uh, CNN, IBN is projecting slightly higher vote percentage for BJP, but five percent more, um, and um, you know slightly less for a JDU. So if you take the averages, though, uh, you know you see that uh, uh, the BJP is actually winning. 21 seats in Bihar, um, and the UPA combined is actually uh, winning 16. Um, uh, the Janata Dal United is actually getting cornered in Bihar with uh, only three seats. Now, uh, interestingly, in Bihar, um, um, the Congress is in alliance with uh, the Rashtriya Janata Dal and uh, with, uh, 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 actually, I, I think it's only the Rashtriya Janata Dal uh, they are in alliance with. So. Uh, the Lok Janashakti, Lok Janashakti Party, which uh, was part of the Rashtri Janata Dal, uh, um, Rashtri Janata Dal and Lok Janashakti Party actually had contested the elections together in 2009. Uh, that's uh, not the case anymore. Um, uh, Ram Bilas Paswan's uh, Lok Janashakti Party is now part of the NDA. Mm -hmm. um, now, the UPA combined uh, winning 10 seats is uh, probably, uh, you know, something that uh, people may not agree with. Uh, when I saw the forecast first, um, I was also a little bit uh, surprised, but it's possible that the RJD Congress combined is actually um, able to consolidate some votes in its favor. Um, and again, it's a numbers game. The numbers are in their favor. Um, so let's try to actually uh, perform a and analysis, some sensitivity analysis. Let us take uh, the CNN IBN forecast and let's see what happens here. 43% to BJP, 16% to, uh, to JDU, and 28% uh, uh, to uh, UPA. Uh, and let's uh, do the math. So we have, uh, um, now things change. We have 21 seats still for the BJP, two seats to Janata Dal United, and 17. So one more to uh, UPA. the UPA, but that shifts from the JDU, mm -hmm. right? So again, I think that uh, the forecast in Bihar seems to be pretty stable based mm -hmm. on these numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, so even uh, before this, uh, we looked at Haryana, there also it seemed yeah, uh, pretty yeah, stable. Yeah. So 
uh, I think this is again in the characteristics of this uh, model that as you do the sensitivity, you see either a lot of sensitivity and changes with small uh, percentage changes to the opinion polls, whereas it holds steady in many other cases. Yes, that's true. So our next state is uh, Tamil Nadu. Okay. So let's uh, select Tamil Nadu. Let's see what's happening here. So again, we have uh, two uh, forecasts, um, some divergence here between the two forecasts um, uh, for the ADMK and DMK. So we have uh, CNN and IBM projecting 32% for ADMK and 23% for the DMK, uh, whereas uh, NDTV is actually projecting uh, slightly higher percentages for both the parties. Incidentally, the CNN and IBM is actually projecting about 8% higher vote share for the NDA. Um, and as I said earlier in the program, the NDA, um, the, the alliance uh, is actually uh, BJP and, um, you know, a few smaller parties. So uh, based on the average uh, from these opinion polls, uh, we see uh, Jalalita's ADMK winning 23 seats in um, um, Tamil Nadu, uh, DMK winning 11, uh, Congress winning 2, and um, um, NDA winning 3. Uh, actually, I should be pointing here because this is the what if section, uh, but uh, right now both these numbers are same. Um, so if we were to do uh, some what if, if we were to actually take uh, the CNN IBN uh, numbers, 32%, uh, 23%, uh, 12%, and 22%, and do a what if analysis, then we have still 23 seats for ADMK, 5 for DMK, two for Congress, that remains the same. So here, ADMK actually loses six seats and that gets transferred to the NDA, okay? Now, on the other hand, if we were to actually use the NDTV forecast, 40% um, for ADMK, 31 for DMK, 10% for the Congress, and 14% for the NDA. Then obviously, um, you know, um, it's no different than our uh, forecast based on the averages. averages yeah. So Tamil Nadu, just like the previous uh, state of Bihar, uh, does have these uh, characteristics where a lot of these alliances have changed uh, this year, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, for this election. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, those are also being uh, taken into account. Yeah, they have to take into account. And I think that uh, an important part is that uh, you have to... Um, uh, you, you you have to use historical data. Mm -hmm. So you have to actually um, have a pretty good system where uh, you can um, account for these changes uh, with historical data. Uh, so just uh, taking into account uh, what is happening in these polls is not good enough. If you are actually going to use historical data, then you have to adjust for uh, these alliances for historical data as well and then see what would have been the impact. And that's okay, the so, strength of the model to be able to take into account various factors. That's correct. So uh, our next state uh, will be Uttar Pradesh. And I know that our audience is uh, going to be very keen on what we have to project for Uttar Pradesh. So uh, here uh, we go, uh, Uttar Pradesh, 80 seats. And um, I know that uh, <laughs> it... Uh, uh, there is a lot of interest in Uttar Pradesh, Simply obviously because it's a large state, state yeah. and it has uh, always had, uh, has played, it, Uttar Pradesh has always played a very important role uh, in Indian politics and uh, particularly in the formation of the national governments. Now, we have two opinion polls in Uttar Pradesh, and um, to be honest with you, I think that uh, I was expecting a lot more opinion polls uh, about Uttar Pradesh, but uh, because it's in the microscope, it's in the crosshairs. Yes. And um, I was a little surprised that I could find only two opinion polls um, for the state of Uttar Pradesh. And they're pretty close too. Uh, well, uh, this is pretty close. Actually, that's, uh, that's quite interesting that uh, uh, they're both converging to the same uh, type of numbers for BJP, the BSP, and the Samajwadi Party. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's some divergence for the UPA. Okay. Now, based on these numbers, based on these uh, opinion polls, uh, the projection is that BJP wins 49 out of the 80 seats. The Samajwadi Party wins 20. The 
Congress led UPA combined wins 10, and one seat actually goes to BSP. Now, the Congress is actually in, in an alliance in Uttar Pradesh with Ajit Singh's uh, Rashtriya Lok Dal, RLD. Um, and um, uh, BSP and uh, the Samajwadi Party, of course, they are contesting on their own. Uh, Uttar Pradesh happens to be, you know, where they have been dominant regional players. Now, the question is, should we be doing uh, some sensitivity analysis here uh, for the case of Uttar Pradesh? And I think we should. Um, so let's uh, let's try to do something like this here. Let's try to actually... But uh, Partha, uh, before you go to the sensitivity analysis, maybe you can uh, give a little bit of a highlight. We had covered this in uh, part one and part two for the uh, analysis we had done there. For example, if you see the vote share, you mm -hmm. see 19% here uh, for BSP and 13% for UPA, mm -hmm. but they translate to uh, quite a divergent for the spread that you have between the percentages there, but the number of seats spread is actually much larger. Uh, I think we had talked about it in part one and part two. Maybe well, it's, you can you highlight that again. You have to understand that in uh, Uttar Pradesh, um, Congress is actually, so the big wigs of Congress are contesting from Uttar Pradesh. So. Rahul Gandhi from Ameti, uh, Sonia Gandhi from uh, Rai Bareilly, mm -hmm. and um, they are going to, you know, attract a lot of votes. votes. Um, and they have traditionally attracted a lot of votes in uh, their constituencies. So uh, that does count, right? So that adds up to the percentage, percentage. and uh, they win. Now, it, it's again, like we talked about this yesterday, you could be very strong in one or two constituencies. Um, and, uh, you know, get only maybe 5% vote in a large state and mm -hmm. still be able to win two or three seats. Got it. Uh, if you look at uh, the Rashtriya Lokdal, uh, Ajit Singh's uh, uh, RLD, um, uh, traditionally they have won maybe 3% or 4% votes in UP, but they have been able to win like, you know, two, three seats, uh, Bagpat and, uh, you know, some of the neighboring constituencies. So, mm -hmm. so th it all depends. Now, on the other hand, if you do have prominence uh, in a state, so you're getting 19, 20, 25 percent votes, but you are behind someone else um, in, across, a, you know, a large geography that is not necessarily going to translate into seats. Now, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, I don't think that uh, implies that uh, um, uh, political parties should actually be concentrating in uh, certain geographies alone, um, like uh, some companies do. So you're focusing on uh, only certain geographies. I mean, I'm not implying that, but that's uh, that's what the data is showing me. And I think the uh, point to highlight also here is that uh, the goal here is for us to give you a sense of how uh, scientific methods are being used here to predict the results. And um, these scientific methods, as we said, are we are making it transparent. And transparency also implies that we highlight all the nuances in these numbers that go into these predictions. So I think this is another example of um, uh, highlighting that all of these factors are being taken into account. That's correct. So let's try to perform some sensitivity analysis. I think that we want to spend a couple of minutes in performing some sens sensitivity analysis for um, uh, Uttar Pradesh, uh, this being such an important state. So uh, let us uh, take, uh, let's say uh, we take um, the CNN IBM poll. So first, mm -hmm. uh, I want to take the numbers from the CNN IBM poll and do um, uh, what if, and then we will put some other numbers. So 18% uh, for BSP, 22 for the Samajwadi Party, and 16 for on the UPA. So we do what if analysis. Um, still, um, 48 seats for the BJP. The Samajwadi Party wins uh, one seat less. Uh, Congress actually is uh, winning 13. Um, so let's uh, do the following. Let's uh, take 38% uh, for the BJP. Uh, this is uh, going to be based on um, uh, the opinion poll from NDTV. So 38% uh, from uh, for uh, BJP, 20% uh, for the BSP, 22% for the Samajwadi Party, and 10% for the UPA. So now uh, you have... Um, um, BJP is relatively stable. I think that uh, what's happening is the UPA uh, is uh, uh, losing uh, some seats and those are actually getting transferred to uh, BSP. Yes. So that's, uh, that's uh, the change. Now, I actually did some more analysis here of, um, of uh, um, the, you know, the relative uh, uh, 
a vote share uh, between the three parties. So let's say we um, uh, go by this. We put 35% uh, for the BJP. Uh, we take um, uh, we take 19% uh, uh, for BSP. Actually, let me just, just refresh this, and then we'll uh, start over again. So. Uh, we'll take 3% uh, away from BJP, so 34% for BJP, um, and 1% uh, gets transferred to the BSP, 1% uh, to the Samajwadi Party, and 1% to Congress. Um, it's a hypothetical scenario, um, still 46 seats for the BJP. Now, on the other hand, if um, the BJP were to get 40% and 1% uh, uh, less from BSP, 1% uh, less from the Samajwadi party, and 1% less from the UPA. Then let's see what happens. So then BJP gets 55 seats. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, Uttar Pradesh is going to be very interesting. I think that 1% uh, swing in the favor of any political party uh, is going to make a difference in the results. Mm -hmm. And I think that they know that, and that's why you see the intensity of campaigning in Uttar Pradesh. That's why you see that um, parties are actually making last ditch efforts to reach out to their voters. Mm -hmm. um, so that uh, sort of concludes uh, the states, except for Andhra Pradesh. Now, um, I was actually going to do a forecast for Andhra Pradesh, but um, uh, we do have uh, news about uh, some relative uh, instability in the alliance between um, uh, the Telugu Desam and the BJP. Um, so we'll wait for the things to settle down a little, little bit. Uh, we have some forecasts, some preliminary forecasts, um, but I do want to actually spend more time on Andhra Pradesh and have a special maybe 10-minute seg segment, um, a, a special 10-minute segment for Andhra Pradesh on Monday mm -hmm. next week. So, uh, so that's uh, uh, you know that's what uh, uh, we have in the forecast. Uh, we actually covered um, in part two 12 states, and um, in uh, part three we uh, really covered five. Um, we want to cover Andhra Pradesh, but there will be a special segment on Andhra Pradesh uh, next week. So let's now turn to the All India forecast. Yeah, and and if you recall, uh, Partha, just before you went to these uh, states for part three. You said that you're going to give a, a small tidbit on the smaller states that you didn't cover uh, before you go to All India. So, uh, any any thoughts on the smaller uh, yeah, states? Yeah, well, what I'll do is let's just put up the uh, the forecast for um, uh, all of like All India forecast, and then let's talk about the other states. So, mm -hmm. uh, the other states, uh, 34 seats. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this is a combination of methods. Um, obviously, you cannot use a statistical method. Um, where uh, you see um, there's only one seat in a given state. Uh, I mean, I guess you could, but the, but the confidence you will have um, in application of any statistical method for a seat uh, is not going to work. So uh, what is done here is that we look at historical trends. Uh, like, for example, in Tripura, uh, the left has been extremely, extremely strong there. Um, uh, similarly, in um, you know Goa, uh, we see that uh, you know it's basically a two-party uh, contest, contest between the Congress and the BJP. Um, so those things are taken into account, mm -hmm. and basically we cluster these uh, uh, states into maybe uh, two or three groups, groups. and then uh, perform the uh, same analysis. The right? same analysis on these two or three groups. Um, separate, just like we did uh, for or the, for the bigger states, right? But this is done like uh, for two or three um, groups, uh, yeah. groups uh, separately, yeah. uh, and the groups have to be uh, based on the dominance of the parties um, in those particular states. And and the primary thinking there is the number of seats are small on an individual basis. That the analysis is not as significant. Yeah, the analysis is not going to be significant. But if you combine them with uh, Voting uh, with uh, like-minded uh, uh, states as far as voting patterns are concerned, concerned. Uh, then uh, you'll be able to decide. So, so that's basically the uh, the factor behind the clusters 
is the voting patterns or is there some other factor uh, in uh, yeah you? it's the vote shared by the different uh, parties in uh, uh, each of these uh, small states and then you basically combine them uh, combine those states that have uh, similar, similar. Uh, voting patterns right. um, and then uh, you create these homogeneous groups um, okay. of, of course if you know, think about it. If I'm actually trying to predict Goa and Tripura uh, together, then uh, that is uh, going to be, uh, you know, quite problematic. Quite, quite different from each other uh, right. in terms of the patterns. Yes. Um, so let's talk about the All India forecast now. Mm -hmm. um, so again, we have scenario one, which is uh, more optimistic towards the NDA, the BJP-led uh, NDA. And then we'll also talk about scenario two, which is less optimistic towards the BJP-led NDA. And, um, uh, you know, we want to actually provide these numbers here. So we have uh, all these numbers. Uh, we have the total seats, 543, um, all the states. And then we have, um, um, you know, what we are projecting in mm -hmm. our more optimistic towards the NDA scenario, how many seats the NDA is expected to win? So you have 300. And these are the numbers that we yeah, these covered so far yeah. in yeah. all they, our they, analysis. They will add up. So if you add up all those numbers, it will add up to 300 seats for the NDA in scenario one, 97 for the UPA in scenario one, uh, 20 for the left, um, large part coming from Kerala, and then uh, you have uh, the ADMK, um, 23 from Tamil Nadu, one, I guess, from Pondicherry, um, five uh, uh, for uh, DMK in Tamil Nadu, and then you have the Samajwadi Party, and then obviously you have the Trinamool Congress, uh, all of it coming from West Bengal. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have the others, uh, you have uh, Assam, uh, Jharkhand, um, Odisha, uh, this is the Biju Janta Dal, uh, and then you have uh, Telangana, um, is the TRS uh, and others, uh, Simandra, uh, this could be a YS, uh, YSR Congress, and the other um, states and union territories. And most of these others essentially are due to regional differences. Uh, and the regional, regional parties. parties, actually, the regional parties. And again, uh, uh, you know, there are um, uh, re uh, regional parties that have dominance in a, a small pocket or in a small state, or, or maybe in a state. And Odisha is uh, where Biju Janta Dal actually has dominance. So um, I could have created another column here, but um, I put that uh, here in others. So uh, just for the sake of explanation. So uh, as you explained, Partha, that you're going to cover a special section on Andhra Pradesh because of some of the new changes that are happening there. But you have accounted for it in this because you have to have Andhra Pradesh covered as part of the national prediction. So uh, uh, how, how can you explain this uh, I, as I it stands right now? I do have preliminary predictions. Mm -hmm. I, I do have preliminary predictions. Um, what I cannot do now is um, um, a rigorous sensitivity analysis because it looks like the alliance between the BJP and the TDP um, has hit some rough weather. Um, so I'd uh, rather wait for um, maybe till Monday um, and see how things pan out and based on that we can perform some analysis. So what I would not like to do is to uh, show a projection and then on account of um, a change in the alliance patterns um, have a completely different forecast uh, two days later. Yeah, I think again it uh, boils down to our uh, transparency of the model uh, and making sure that we let you know of every little thing that uh, we are taking into consideration for this uh, project. Yeah, all the nuances. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So let's go to scenario two. So Partha, we are now going to look at a slightly different scenario then? Yeah, so now uh, let's look at uh, scenario two, which is uh, less optimistic towards uh, the uh, BJP-led NDA combined. So here uh, we have 250 seats going to NDA. Um, the difference, uh, you know, uh, like if you go to the previous slide, um, the differences are actually coming from, let's say, Gujarat. Highlight uh, Gujarat here, and then Rajasthan here, and then also Madhya Pradesh. Um, so we go to less optimistic here. Instead of 26, 22 here. Madhya Pradesh instead of 28, 26. Rajasthan instead of 23, 20. Mm -hmm. So... 
some less, of these some of these states are making a difference yeah yeah so let uh, less optimistic so the question is why there's this difference of 50 seats well it's a large country with a lot of states and um, they all add up the, yeah two or three two or three um, in each state it could add up mm -hmm. um, so that's what uh, is happening also uh, if you look at uh, Karnataka and we talked about Karnataka yesterday so it's seven here and in the more optimistic scenario, it is 15 years, so eight seats. And I think this um, is again a demonstration of uh, some states being more sensitive, some being more steady. Uh, I think that's showing up here. Too. Yeah, that, that, that definitely is showing up. And I think that, again, uh, uh, when you want to forecast, you want to forecast um, some range. Um, obviously, you cannot say that um, a given political party is going to win exactly 37 seats. Mm -hmm. um, I think that... Uh, that's, uh, you know, in my opinion, unless it's a very one-sided election, uh, you cannot forecast that. Uh, and you should not forecast that. Um, so, um, uh, you know, uh, we're looking also at uh, the UPA here, uh, the more optimistic scenario, 137 seats as compared to uh, 97, 97 seats, seats. Um, in the less optimistic scenario for them. So most of the shift uh, between the numbers uh, ha again happened between the two dominant. Uh, yeah, that, that's expected. You mm -hmm. are going to expect that kind of a shift. Uh, so you have 40 seats um, uh, the UPA is gaining. Um, and in the more optimistic scenario for the BJP, they are scoring 300. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the UPA combined is getting 97 seats. So they're actually getting 40 seats from UPA. Uh, there will be some other differences in the other, um, uh, in the you know, the composition of the parliament if this scenario were to uh, come true uh, with the other parties. Uh, that's but that's, uh, you know, uh, less pronounced here. It's only 10 seats that are coming from the other parties. So, uh, you know, uh, again, I think that uh, uh, one of the questions that uh, you will get asked is that if the forecast is so wide between... 250 seats and 300 seats, uh, then um, uh, can you throw some light into like, you know, how do you ascertain uh, mm -hmm. who is going to form the next government and that sort of stuff. So it raises uh, some interesting questions, uh, yeah. that kind of a range. So I, I want to actually uh, summarize all of this, uh, the All India forecast. Um, and I think that uh, I'll start off by saying what I have said in part two of the program and now in part three of this program that a one to two percent difference in certain states is going to make a big difference mm -hmm. in um, the number of seats and i think that the alliances and the parties know that and that's why you see the high intensity campaigning in certain states um, as the you know the day of polling comes uh, nearer and nearer now, the NDA is expected to win between 250 and 300 seats. Um, now, you'll see other projections. Some of the other projections are also saying that uh, the NDA is uh, going to get a majority. Um, some are saying 270, 269. Um, uh, we are actually um, giving a range between 200 and 300. And the BJP alone is expected to win uh, between 215 and 255 seats. Now, if that were to happen, um, if that were to happen, this will be the best performance of the BJP in the electoral history of India. And the UPA is expected to win between 97 and 137 seats, with uh, Congress uh, itself winning uh, between 79 and 116 seats. These are all based on the projections that we have from the opinion polls. Mm -hmm. So we are actually forecasting based on the opinion so I'll caveat all of this by saying that if the opinion polls are correct or reasonably accurate, are reasonably accurate then this is the composition that we are looking for in the next parliament. Mm -hmm. AIA DMK, the Samajwadi Party and the Trinamool Congress are expected to be the other major players in the next Lok Sabha. Mm -hmm. So they have a big say in the alliances basically. Yeah, they, have a, they, have a, they have a role to play. Mm -hmm. Uh, the IADMK, uh, Samajwadi Party, and the Trinamool Congress. Now, obviously, 250 to 300 seats. So, uh, you know, you if you have to make a forecast, um, and I think that all forecasters, end of the day, if uh, I were to go and uh, uh, talk to someone, uh, again, the question will arise, like, 
what is the number? So I, I know that we have to talk about a range. So what we did is we ran multiple simulations. So we multiple scenarios with uh, different states in play, uh, different states in play, and we are actually varying the uh, percentage of votes for different states um, at you know all all at the same time uh, for all of India. So basically, all of those sensitive analysis applied to every state. Yes, all of the sensitivity analysis being applied to all the states together. Now, uh, there will be uh, some error cancellation. Uh, we will uh, probably be uh, off one seat in uh, one state or two seats in another state above uh, our projection or above the actual uh, winds in a couple of states and below the actual winds in a couple of states. So, so expected some error cancellation is expected to happen. Um, however, uh, based on these numbers, when we perform the simulation, in 80% of the cases, the NDA actually gets 270 plus seats. And that's the confidence level that you're talking yeah. about. So you're saying 80% of the cases, I'm actually getting more than 270 seats for the NDA. Now, does that mean that we are going to be absolutely correct? Uh, this 20% chance that that may not happen. We may actually be like 240. Uh, uh, the NDA might actually be 240 um, or 230, right? So, but it's like lower probability. Now, not saying that lower probability events do not happen. Um, actually, if you uh, read uh, some of the literature by some of the, um, you know, uh, people like Nassim Taleb, they will say that lower probability <laughs> events are more frequent uh, than what you expect. But uh, again, uh, statistically based on this analysis, I have to say that 80% of the times in our analysis, based on the opinion polls, we are witnessing that MDA is getting 270 plus seats. Mm -hmm. That's that's really uh, interesting. And I think uh, what I would also like to highlight to the viewers again is that what we have done through the course of uh, the three parts is essentially used a very scientific method uh, to predict uh, what is expected to happen in the 2014 Indian elections. We have taken into account the various nuances, especially in a multi-party democracy like India, where different states have different regional parties, different characteristics. Our model has been made very transparent, as Partha has highlighted mm -hmm. that uh, multiple times. But more importantly, uh, we have taken uh, a very, uh, you know, sound scientific uh, approach to every state uh, and shown you state by state uh, how uh, these projections look, uh, the sensitivity analysis state by state, and the sensitivity applied to all of the states at the same time to come up with uh, this kind of a, a projection. And just again to reiterate, we used the opinion polls, in most cases averages where you have more than one opinion poll, as an input factor. Uh, in our model, uh, which is the raking model, uh, to come up with projections on seats, not just the outcome of the election, but also the projection of the seats and the various um, uh, composition of the parties that may come into the play. So, Partha, last words? Yeah, I think that uh, what we want to do from here is that uh, we, uh, as new opinion polls become available, uh, we want to update the forecast. Um, so, look for um, my blog in our uh, www.fuzzyl.com and uh, we'll uh, have uh, some other um, uh, uh, YouTube videos that will get posted um, on uh, this very topic. So there may be a part four, part five. We obviously will do a special section on Andhra Pradesh. Mm -hmm. um, we are also going to make a tool available on our website where people can actually go and plug in their forecast and see how uh, what the forecast looks like, uh, or plug in their, uh, you know, their their perceived vote share for a given party, or what they think a party will uh, uh, get in terms of votes in a given state, and they will get a forecast. Instead so of using just we, the opinion polls, they can use their own. Uh, yeah, numbers. they can use their own projections, and I think that uh, you know the whole objective of this exercise is again to bring predictive analytics to the people. How. Mm. Um, uh, we can actually take predictive analytics and, um, um, uh, you know, uh, bring it to the people for everyday use. And I hope that uh, uh, this actually meets that objective. Thank you. Thank you again.